Welcome back to Tennis Talk. My name's Cam Williams, and it's time to go through the power rankings for the season, the first ever episode of the Power Ranking Show for 2022. Uh, we've got a lot to go through because we've obviously got the Australian Open that's just happened. A lot of players have gone up the ranks, dropped points as well, gone down the ranks. Let's start with the past results, though, because, of course, we only had two tournaments last week. The big one, the Australian Open. Let's go check the results. Of course, last week we had two big tournaments happening at the same time, the Australian Open. And for the women's side of things, Ash Barty defeated Danielle Collins 6-3, 7-6, in the final to win her third major title. And it was also the first time that Collins had been in a Grand Slam final and she got rewarded in the rankings. And on the men's side, Nadal defeated Medvedev, the number two Medvedev, in five very long sets, 2-6, 6-7, 6-4, 6-4, 7-5, to lift his second Australian Open and 21st Grand Slam title. And he got a little bit of a bump in the rankings because of that win as well. Let's go have a look at the WTA rankings for this week. And there's some changes in the top 10, but no change up the top of the rankings with Barty staying at number one after winning the Australian Open. Sabalenka stays at number two, but Muguruza, she drops down four spots to number seven after failing to defend the points that she made in the 2020 Australian Open final which means that Krejcikova goes up one spot to number three. Sviantec goes from nine all the way up to number four because of her semi-final result at the Australian Open this year, with Karolina Pushkova at number five, having not played so far this year. But it also stays at number six. You have Muguruza at seven, Sakri at eight, and Kontave, she dropped down two spots to number nine after a disappointing result at the Australian Open. And on Shabor, she falls out of the top 10, making way for Danielle Collins, the Australian Open finalist, going up 20 spots into the top 10 for the first time in her career, and also making her the highest ranked American player in the world for the first time. So she got a big reward after making that final at the Australian Open. Let's go take a look at the WTA race to the finals, the WTA finals, of course, at the end of the year. And it's an interesting looking list. After one month of the season, we have Ash Barty, obviously at number one after winning a couple of titles. Collins at number two because of the Australian Open final. Madison Keys, she's at number three after winning a title and also making it to the semifinals of Australia. Sviantec slots in at number four. Krejcikova at five. Badossa at six. Halep comes in at number seven after having a really good week before the Australian Open winning a title. And this over at number eight. Again, she also won a title before the Australian Open. Kaya Kanepi, she slots in at number nine after making it to the quarterfinals of the Australian Open, having a very good week. And Elise Cornet, again, same as Kanepi, she had a very good week in Australia, so she gets into the top 10. Of course, the top eight qualify for the finals, and we're a long way from that, but this is what they look like in the first couple of weeks of the season. Let's have a look at players that have gone up in the rankings that are outside of the top 10, and Madison Keys, she's gone up 23 spots. It's number 20 in the world after a great result in Australia. Cornet also gets rewarded in the rankings, going up to number 37 in the world, 24 spots higher than last week. And Kanepi, she's gone up 52 spots to number 63 in the world after making the quarterfinals at the Australian Open. Players that have dropped in the rankings because of dropping points from the past couple of Australian Opens. Henry Osaka goes down 71 spots, to number 85 in the world, after failing to defend the points she made last year from winning the title. Sophia Kennan also had a massive drop, going down 82 spots, to number 95 in the world, after losing all the points from the 2020 Australian Open. And Serena Williams, 185 spots lower than last week, to 244 in the world after not playing in the Australian Open and losing all their points. She is way down the rankings. And all three of those players might have to get wild cards into the upcoming event if they choose to play. So some big champions dropping down in the rankings after failing to do well at the Australian Open. Let's have a look at the men's rankings now. And not too many changes to the men's rankings this week. We had Novak Djokovic staying at number one with... Daniel Medvedev just behind at number two. Had he had won the Australian Open, he might have actually been number one. But they're very, very close together. Zverev comes in at number three. Sidney Pass stays at number four. Rafa, despite winning the Australian Open, he stays at number five. But Teo Berrettini, he goes up to number six, pushing Rublev down to number seven after making the semifinals of Australia. Kasper Ruud not playing in the Australian Open. He stays at number eight. Oje Aliassime at number nine. And Yannick Sinner rounds out the top ten for this week. Having a look at the race to the finals, the race to Turin. And, of course, Rafa Nadal, he's at number one after winning the Australian Open, also winning a title leading into Australia. Number two is Daniel Medvedev making the final of the Australian Open. That's why he's at number two. City Pass, he's at number three. Berrettini at number four, both making the semi-finals of Australia. Oje Aliassime, he's at number five. Shapovalov is at number six. Monfils is at number seven. Batista Agu at number eight after having a really good ATP Cup with Spain. Yannick Sinner comes in at number nine 
And Maxim Krezzi, he comes in at number 10 after making a final before the Australian Open and also doing very well at the Australian Open itself. So he gets a little boost in the rankings and features in the top 10 for the race to Turin. Having a look at the players that have gone up in the rankings after a really good Australian summer, Manorino, he goes up 11 spots, number 58 in the world after making a fourth round of the Australian Open. Cressy, he's up 11 spots to 59 in the world, which is a career high ranking for him. Again, like I said before, had a very good start to the season. And Kecmenovic, he's gone up 14 spots to number 60 in the world, was supposed to play Djokovic in the first round of the Open, but because Djokovic didn't play, he actually got very far at the Australian Open, fourth round, and he got rewarded in the rankings, so made the most of his chance. Players that have gone down in the rankings, all Grand Slam champions dropping down, Roger Federer, he's gone down 13 spots to number 30 in the world, after dropping all the points he made from the Australian Open two years ago. Dominic Team also dropping down in the rankings, 21 spots to 37, after dropping all the points from the final he made at the Australian Open two years ago. And Stan Wawrinka, he's gone down 57 spots to 159 in the world. Again, dropping points that he made back in 2020 Australian Open. So all Grand Slam champions dropping down the rankings, just like the women's side, from not playing this event. So there they are. They are the rankings for this week. Some massive drops for Grand Slam champions and some career high rankings for players that have played really well this season. Let me know down in the comments below. What's the most shocking ranking for you? Are you shocked about these Grand Slam champions falling down? Or are you maybe surprised about some of the top 10 players that are in the race to the uh, WTA and ATP finals? Obviously, they're very, very new, and we've got you know another 11 months to go before we actually get to those tournaments, or about 10, nine months to go. But it's interesting to see, you know, players that did well in Australia, they're in the top 10 for now. How much longer will they stay there?